Every stream advice YouTube channel talks about how if you wanna grow on Twitch, you have to make TikTok videos. But there's one really big flaw with that logic. I don't feel like it, it's too much work. So instead, I programmed a Twitch channel point reward that my viewers can type a message into, and when they redeem it, it automatically starts recording a TikTok video. Whatever they type in gets read out by that annoying TikTok girl voice. You know the one that sounds like you wanna claw the inside of your brains out? Here are my thoughts on the future of Twitch. That animation, that's not just cosmetic, it literally records a separate vertical video inside of OBS. I even programmed it to automatically upload that video straight to my Discord server. Let's talk about how I did all of that. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes ranging from topics like animation, film, programming. Look, I know we're gonna be auto-generating our TikToks today, but I did for real actually start making actual real TikToks, and you'd be surprised just how different the format is. Hey, Macarena, is that how TikTok works? Seriously, the attention span of people on TikTok is like, half a second. So trying to hook people in in that first second is something really difficult to do. Josh Otusanya has a great video on scripting, shooting, and uploading your first TikTok video. And he shows you how to come up with an idea, how to keep your script as simple as possible so that you can make a TikTok video that's really, really engaging. So if you've ever wanted to learn a new skill, check out the link down below and the first 1,000 of you will get a free one month trial of Skillshare's premium membership. Let's start right back at the beginning. So to start, we needed to find a picture of a phone to use. So I went to Google Images and I found this picture. Then I went to OBS, I created a brand new scene and just added that image into that scene. I wanted to animate the phone going up and down so it kind of looks like someone's pulling his phone up to start recording. And that's really easy to do inside of OBS. You just change the show and the high transition of that phone image. Then I took my camera and shoved it behind the phone so it looks like I'm inside of the phone screen. I had to make a mask for my camera to cut it to the same shape as the phone's display. And since I wanted the phone and the camera to be grouped together, I just added them into their own nested scene. Next, I wanted the phone to start really far away and then zoom in to fill the full height of the screen. You can use an OBS plugin to do that called Move Transition. You just add a Move Transition filter to the scene and you tell it which sources you wanna move in and out and what position to put them on the screen. So we have all of the steps for our macro. So it's just, you show the phone, you zoom the phone in, zoom it out, and then you hide it again. But now we need a way to chain all of these actions together. Kind of like a big gigantic macro. So we pulled out our favorite program, StreamerBot, because not only can StreamerBot make these big multi-actions for turning sources on and off and whatever in OBS, but that macro can also automatically be triggered every time someone hits that channel point reward. So I made a new action inside of StreamerBot. This is what's gonna hold our big action. Then we created a new Twitch channel point reward and linked that channel point reward to that big macro. I decided to use straight up raw code to make our macro. You don't have to use code to use StreamerBot, but like, it was just easier for me that way. Anyway, we just started with a really basic animation. So we put in some commands to show the phone source, zoom that source in, zoom it out, and then hide it again. And because we added our phone into its own dedicated scene, we can just add that scene on top of our regular game scene. This is where I ran into our first problem. See, I'm super detail oriented. And so what I wanted to do is when the phone zooms into the camera, I wanted everything behind the camera to go blurry, kind of like it's going out of focus. And you can't do that effect if you're just nesting that base scene into your game scene. So I had to get creative. What I did instead is inside of that original base scene, I added a stream effects source mirror underneath the camera. Then in my macro, I programmed it so at the very start of that animation, it points that source mirror to whatever the current scene is then it switches out of the current scene into the base scene. And when the animation is done, it switches back to the original scene. I swear nobody understood what I just said just then, but I promise you it works. On the surface, it doesn't look any different, but now we could add a blur filter to that source mirror that's sitting behind the phone. Then using the move transition plugin, whenever the phone zooms in, we can animate that blur in then when the phone zooms out, we can take that blur away. And it's just that extra bit of polish that just really, it just really sells the effect. 
I swear, this is, this is the shit that gets me excited, dude. But no TikTok video is complete without that annoying TikTok girl voice. So I wanted my viewers to be able to type in whatever message they want and whatever they write out gets read out as text-to-speech. I did some Googling and luckily someone made a Python script that literally uses the exact same TikTok voices. So you can just type in whatever message you want into like command prompt and then it will download an MP3 file that uses the TikTok voice. And it's completely authentic because it comes directly from TikTok. POV. When you're watching a free YouTube video and you're not even smashing that like button. So with that, all I needed to do is to write some fancy code inside of StreamerBot that takes whatever you write inside Twitch chat and then converts that to an MP3 file that we can just play inside of our macro. Now, what else does every TikTok video have? black text inside of a white box or white text inside of a black box with those annoying emojis. I hate that. So yeah, let's add that in. So we ran into a couple more problems here. So the first one was I wanted my viewers to be able to write what goes inside of that caption box, but they're already writing something for the text to speech part. So I basically just require my viewers to put a semicolon in their message and everything after the semicolon will go inside of the caption. Everything before the semicolon will go inside of the text-to-speech part. Initially, I was just gonna add a basic text source inside of OBS and then whatever my viewers write will just fill in that text source. The problem is um, uh, emojis. It doesn't support emojis very well that way. Also, putting the box around the text is kind of hard, so I resorted to making a browser source and then I would just pass the data over from StreamerBot into our browser source so we can fill the caption and then we can format the caption however we want and it's gonna support emojis and everything. So at this point, we're pretty close to being finished. We've got this cool animation of the phone popping up. We've got some text-to-speech. We've got caption and my viewers can write whatever they want to fill in both of those things. Now I want to actually record whatever appears on that phone. I don't want it to record the full screen. I want it to record just that vertical section that's inside of the phone. Turns out there's another OBS plugin called Source Record, and this is a really cool plugin. We've covered it on the channel before. But what you can do is you can add a Source Record filter onto any source you want in OBS, and then you can just set all your recording settings here then anytime you enable that source record filter, it's going to start recording until you turn the filter off. This is awesome because in theory, if I want to record my screen inside of our macro, all we need to do to start the recording is to flick that filter on. And then when we want to stop the recording, we just turn it off. Unfortunately, like most things in programming, uh, it's not that easy. The source record plugin is pretty buggy. I noticed sometimes I would start a recording and then the file would get corrupted and then I can't start another recording. It was just really annoying. So instead what I did was I added some code inside of our macro to make a duplicate of that source record filter. And then when I want to stop the recording, I just delete it. And for whatever reason, that seems to be less buggy. I don't know, I didn't make the plugin, you figure it out. So that's the recording part done. So let's do a quick recap. The viewer redeems a channel point reward, phone pops up, does text-to-speech while showing the caption. Meanwhile, in the background, there's a recording going on Then, when the phone goes away, we're left with a single video file. Now we wanna take that video file and automatically upload it. Unfortunately, uploading directly to TikTok is kind of annoying. And plus, I didn't wanna have all these TikTok videos flooding my TikTok account. So uh, my backup solution was to take the videos and upload them to my Discord server instead. The good news is StreamerBot now has Discord support. And so what you can do is you can make a new text channel inside of your Discord server. You can go into the settings and into integrations and create a webhook URL. And so this is what StreamerBot is gonna use to communicate with your Discord server. So you just take your webhook URL, you add a new action inside of StreamerBot, and then you paste the URL there, then select the video file. Bam, that's it. It's as easy as that. So yeah, with that last step, we're, we're pretty much done. So we got a new channel point reward. My viewers can type a message, does text to speech, does an automatic recording and uploads that to Discord. And uh, yeah, all that took me around six or so hours to do. And uh, now what I wanted to do was just add that little bit of extra polish at the end, 
which took me another six or so hours. I wanted to make a countdown animation to really sell the fact that it's a TikTok recording. So I pulled up HitFilm Express. Don't ask me why I didn't use After Effects. I think the answer is pretty obvious. I'm a Twitch streamer, not a millionaire. I tried to make the animation look as close as possible to the countdown animation that TikTok actually uses. Plus I even added the red record button that goes on whenever you're recording the video. And the last thing I wanted to do was add in Twitch emote support for the caption. I found a really cool resource that allows me to pull every single Twitch emote, BTTV emote, FFZ, 7TV, every emote I can take. And then all I had to do was inside of the caption, every time I see the text that matches an emote, I just replace it with the image, which is something that I say is easy, but took the longest out of everything I had to do in this thing because I don't know how JavaScript works and I had to figure that out. But with all that said, here is the final result. Here are my thoughts on the future of Twitch. Man, Twitch is gonna be just fine, okay? Everybody who's complaining and like, I wanna move to YouTube, cringe L. You know, that's what I think about that. L plus ratio, thank you. That was a good prompt, by the way. I really like that one. Here are my thoughts on the future of Twitch. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Get the hell out of here. Uh, go follow me on Twitch. Uh, sub to me on Patreon. I've been releasing some custom made widgets there. Uh, not, not this one though. This is my, I'm keeping this one for me only. But uh, I, I have other widgets there that you might want to check out. So uh, thanks. I'll see you guys in the next one.